Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on electrostatics. This is video number 17, and I'm going to discuss the electric field inside and outside of a spherical shell, a spherical conducting shell, and that's very important. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstorials.com, and also, if you'd like to find out news or updates on my posts, you can find uh, me on Twitter at AdamBT503. So there are a number of videos previous to this which are relevant. In number 13 I discuss Gauss's law and symmetry. And then in 14 and 15 I actually started using Gauss's law. In actual fact in video 16 I also used Gauss's law. Now in video number 6 what I did was I calculated the electric field inside and outside of a spherical conducting shell. But I did not use Gauss's law. And you may or may not have seen that video. But it, if you did you'll know that it was an absolute pain in the face in order to calculate the electric field of anything essentially, but in this case a spherical shell, a spherical conducting shell, without using Gauss's law. So I'm going to show that in this case when we use Gauss's law it's very simple, very straightforward. Alright, so just to write down what Gauss's law is, we have the closed sur surface integral of the dot product of your electric field with the infinitesimal area element of your Gaussian surface and that equals Q enclosed over epsilon zero. So in order to calculate the electric field due to a spherical shell of continuous charge, what we need to do is come up with a Gaussian surface. So we said for spherical symmetry your Gaussian surface is a sphere. So in order to calculate the electric field inside the shell I'm going to put my Gaussian surface or, which is a sphere inside my spherical conducting shell. So I'm going to call the radius of um, the radius of my conductor, I'm going to call that radius capital R, and I'm going to call the radius of my uh, the radius of my Gaussian surface small r, like that. Okay. So we need to apply Gauss's law, and the reason we can apply Gauss's law is that for both of these, the electric field of a spherical shell is in the radial direction. So it's we'll say the the unit vector associated with this r hat. But the, the infinitesimal, area, infinitesimal area element of a sphere will have d, its dA, but it's also in the radial direction. That means that our, that product will have two parallel components, and the cost, the cost will go to 1, and we can take the electric field outside of the, outside of the integral. So let's go ahead and do that. We're simply going to get E outside of the, the surface area. Okay, so the surface area is going to be 4 pi r squared. And, but we're going to be using small r like that, okay? 4 pi r squared. And that's going to be equal to q enclosed over epsilon 0. But the point about this is the blue line represents the, uh, the conductor and the green line represents my Gaussian surface. So inside my Gaussian surface or inside the green we have zero charge. So we're going to have 0 over epsilon 0. Therefore the electric field inside is equal to 0. Okay, so the electric field inside a spherical conducting shell is zero, and that that actually is how uh, Faraday cages work. So we'll talk about more about that at a later stage. Now, in order to calculate the electric field outside the uh, the spherical conducting shell, what we need to do is this time move our we need to move our Gaussian surface outside it. So we're going to have my Gaussian surface here, okay, at a radius small r again, and note of course that large r represents the radius of our spherical conducting shell. Now we apply Gauss's law again. Once more, E dot dA is going to be, so we're going to have uh, the electric field times 4 pi r squared is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon 0. And I'm sure you've seen at this stage that what we like to do is work with Q and see if there's any way we can rewrite Q so that we can do uh, make the equation a bit more simple. This case, notice by the way, we're on a spherical conducting shell, so the 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 charge is spread out along the surface area of the uh, of the shell. So that means Q will say will say in order to calculate Q, what we need to do is integrate sigma d a prime, sigma d a prime like that. But it's over, the, and this is going to be a surface integral. So that's very straightforward. Once again, we're going to get four pi times capital R squared, and we have sigma. Okay, so that's, that's equal to that's equal to large Q four pi capital R squared sigma. All right. So if we plug that into what we have at the moment, we have four pi capital R to be squared 
sigma over epsilon zero. So there is a small bit of cancellation which can occur here. So we have four pi, we have four pi, and well, I suppose that's really about it. Okay, so let's rewrite the electric field. So the magnitude of the electric field is going to be um, capital R over small r to be squared, sigma over epsilon zero. And the uh, interesting point to note here, of course, is that it's going to be radial. And you find that that's exactly what we got. That's the exact equation we got for the um, when, when we spoke about uh, when we spoke about it in video number six. So that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstorial.com.